Now, you may have heard about a new AI bot that's been breaking the internet called ChatGPT. And, and this is a bot that you can essentially talk to, ask it any questions on any topics, and it's going to give you answers to the best of its ability. So here's the bot, and you can ask it, what is the meaning of life? And it's going to go ahead and have a philosophical discussion with you. The meaning of life is a philosophical question, etc., etc. You can also go ahead and continue the conversation. You can ask it, how do I find happiness then? And it went ahead and created an answer. Finding happiness can be a personal journey, practice gratitude, take care of yourself, connect with others, find meaning and purpose. But not only can it have a philosophical discussion with you, it can also build apps, it can write code, it can review code, it can do some amazing things. And so for today's video, I wanted to see how hard or easy would it be to go out and to build a Flutterflow app with this uh, specific bot. Now, early on, I realized that the app that we want to build is actually a Flutter app, not a Flutterflow app, because Flutterflow is a tool that allows you to build Flutter apps visually. And that's going to be important because that those are going to be the instructions we're going to be telling the bot. And also after thinking about it for a while as to what kind of app I wanted to build, I realized I want a very, very simple app, but an app that I've never built before in Flutter or Flutter Flow. And ultimately the app that I settled on is going to be a simple painting app and the idea is you can pick the type of tool that you want to paint with and then you're going to have a canvas and you can simply drag your mouse and it's going to paint different shapes and stuff like that and I figured this is going to be a good example because number one I've never built such an app in Flutter number two this is a relatively useful app it's a relatively interesting app and I wanted to know how this bot is going to handle uh, building this kind of app as always, all the apps I'm going to be building in today's video are going to be available to view and or clone from my Patreon page, to which you're going to find a link in the description below. Now, the first thing I, I told the bot is I, is I asked it to give me an outline of what I need to do to write a Flutter app where a user can select different instruments, such as a paintbrush, arrow, and a circle and draw on canvas. And so it went ahead and gave me an outline of nine things that I need to do. So it says here to write the Flutter app where a user can select different instruments such as a paintbrush, arrow, and circle and draw on canvas. You will need to do the following. Now it's important to realize that we are giving instructions for a Flutter app, just like I explained before. And so lots of these steps you don't need to do if you're building a Flutter Flow app. But still, this is a good exercise because I wanted to see, okay, how is it going to think as to what kind of widgets do I need to build or what kind of special things I need to get done. Now, while talking to this bot, I immediately realized how the app is going to look, okay? And so what I came up with is going to have a main screen here and it's going to have a bottom panel that's going to have different icons representing different painting or drawing instruments. So maybe you're going to have a paintbrush, Maybe you're going to have some shapes, maybe a pencil, et cetera, et cetera. And this area right here is going to be the canvas. So the user will simply be able to kind of drag their mouse and create different things on this canvas. And so once I realized how I want the app to look, it made the whole process a lot simpler because now I can give it specific instructions. And that's exactly what I did. I basically told it what I just explained and it answered with here's an example of a flutter widget that has two columns with an empty canvas on the top and the bottom area and as soon as i got this response here i immediately realized that i don't want just any canvas with any two widgets i want that bottom that bottom panel to be relatively narrow and i want the majority of the screen real estate to be taken by the top canvas and so that's exactly what I did. I gave it more specific instructions. I said, create a two row layout where the top row takes most of the screen. And now it came back with this. Okay, so basically generated this thing here and it specified a height of 100 for that bottom panel. And what I did is I took this code, I took this widget here and I pasted it as a widget in Flutterflow. And if you're not sure how to do that, what I did was I, I went here, add. I said, let's add a widget. And before that, I click here, I view boilerplate and I copy to editor because you need to do that. 
And then what you need to do is you need to paste that new widget here because whatever you have here is the widget that's gonna be displayed. But you still need everything else because that's gonna help it function with Flutterflow. All of this is called the boilerplate. And once I had this pasted as a widget, we can preview it, and if you preview it, you can see that it's nothing about it is visible, and that is because it's simply a container with two widgets, a widget here and a widget here, okay? So we're not seeing anything. And at that point, I went back to the chatbot and I told it to create a Flutter widget that displays a row of five painting elements. And it went ahead and created a row containing five children, okay? So we have uh, icons, brush, palette, color lens, create an art track. So, it, so essentially it went ahead and picked five random icons that have in one shape or form having to do with painting or drawing. So like a brush, a palette, and a bunch of other ones that I'm not really sure what they do. Now at this point, I realized that I don't want just icons. I want these to be clickable, right? Because they're, they're gonna be just like buttons. I want you know the user to pick a brush. I want them to pick a palette. I want these to actually respond to user input. And I went here and I gave it more instructions. Cre create a Flutter Canvas widget that allows the user to pick one of the instruments and draw a shape on it. And one thing you have to realize about this AI bot is that it's a conversation. And so it remembers the stuff that you asked it before and it remembers how it answered. And so in this example, I am telling it one of the instruments. And so you can't do something like this uh, from the beginning but you can do it as you're talking, as you're having a conversation, because now you have a context. And so it should understand um, the instruments. It knows the instruments are those icons that it just created in the previous step. Unfortunately, I got an error here. And I, you know, once you get an error like this, chances are you're gonna keep getting that error. And that's maybe because of higher load or maybe because of something else. And at that point, I had to start a brand new session. So I started the brand new session and I asked it again to create those icons with those uh, drawing instruments. But this time I specified that they must be clickable. So it went ahead and created brand new drawing elements. So this time it created a brush, a highlight, an eraser, undo and redo. So this is a brand new session with brand new drawing elements. But now, as you can see, it's an icon button, not just an icon. It also has a on press handler, which means that we can, once the user clicks on it, we can uh, respond to this event and do something special. So I went ahead and copied this code and pasted it into Flutterflow. And this is the code here. And once you preview it, you can see now we have a panel here, this bottom panel containing four icons and these are now clickable. Now at this point, I wanted to work on the actual canvas. I wanted to build the part where the user can actually draw on. So I issued the request, create a Flutter canvas where a user can paint things. And here's where I ran into some problems. So it's telling me too many requests, please slow down. And here it's saying we're experiencing exceptionally high demand, please hang tight as we work on scaling our system. And so that is probably because of a very high load, probably something they're gonna fix in the future. But nevertheless, this meant that I had to start all the way from the beginning. So all that conversation, all that context was now erased. So I had to tell it from the beginning what to do. And so the next thing I did was I told it, create a Flutter canvas where a user can paint things. And so it went ahead, it explained it to me, and this is the result. And so I took this code, pasted it as a separate widget inside Flutterflow so that I can preview it and make sure everything is right. And if I preview it, nothing is happening. Okay, we see the canvas, but we can't draw on it. And that is because this example is too general, okay? It has these methods, these functions, but there is nothing inside these functions, okay? This is where you can handle user input and draw on canvas, uh, return true if you want to repaint the canvas. So it's giving me kind of like a skeleton. It's not giving me the actual code that I need in order to draw uh, the canvas with. And so I tried again, and this time it actually gave me a sample piece of code of how a user can paint on the canvas in Flutter. But the problem with this code is I had a compile error. And the reason for that is if you look here, it says render box, 
this is the type of the object. It's, this object is type of render box. But this function is returning a render object. And so that is why we have an issue here is that this is returning a render object, but the type of this is a render box. And so when you try to run it, it's not going to run because there's a, there's a problem here. And that meant essentially that none of this code can actually work for what I'm trying to do because this is the code that's actually uh, responsible for drawing the point. So as you can see, it says on pan update. So when you're panning is when you're drawing. So when you're updating, you're, you're panning, it should be drawing those points. Okay. And in this case, um, it's just not compiling. It's just not the correct code. And so I went ahead and actually asked it, why is my custom painter not painting anything, right? This is something that people would be doing right when they get 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 some code generated and they go ahead and run it and nothing is happening so it's telling me there could be several reasons why your custom painter is not painting anything here are a few potential causes so it's telling me that maybe my paint method is not being called uh, maybe my should repaint method is returning false the paint method is not drawing anything etc cetera, etc cetera. so these reasons are absolutely correct but they're of no use to me, okay? Because I don't have the code in front of me. I don't, you know, like, it's just, it's not enough for, for, for this tool to tell me what's happening. Um, I just, I don't know what to do, right? I, I need the code. I need, it to t I, need it, I need it to solve the problem for me. And so I ended up going on different sites. I ended up reading documentation. I ended up researching it. And I ended up asking it another query. And at the end of the day, I had this result right here. And this is my final result here. And so we can preview it and you can see this bottom panel and you can see the canvas. And so if we run this app, I'm gonna show you the final result of the app that we have. All right, so here's the final result. Here's the final product, here's the app. And so we have this bottom panel that has these icons and these are definitely clickable. And then we have this top, part here, which is the canvas. And so I can drag this mouse and it's going to draw things. Okay. Now, none of this is functional because I wanted to create a very, very simple app just to, you know, see the capabilities of this tool and just to see what kind of app that I can build. But I have no doubt that, you know, if I start kind of fine tuning things, I start telling it, well, when you pick this, if a user picks that, and this is maybe a pencil, make sure you change this to a pencil. And I also have no doubt that you can have different settings for maybe a button that's gonna change the color, maybe change the stroke width, the, you know, the type of, um, you know, the type of drawing you're doing and all of that, I have no doubt. And obviously that has provided that, um, you, you know, you will be able to execute that request in the context. Because if you look at this code right here, you see that it's very, very simple. You have this paint here, this paint, um, call here to this paint object and it's setting different things colors stroke cap stroke width this paint class here and then it's essentially drawing it right canvas draw line you know on different points okay and and this was generated by by the tool so i have no uh, i have no doubt i have no reservations that it's going to be able to kind of modify that right if i say well you know if you pick this do a different color maybe show a color palette and all that and obviously that is provided that you'll be able to have that conversation. Because one thing I realize about this tool is that it's a good idea to break the app that you're building into small little pieces. And so one of the big breakthroughs I had initially was that I realized this is how I want the app to look. Okay, I wanted, you know, this bottom panel here, I wanted the canvas. And so in my mind, I knew that, you know, this is going to be one big widget here, it's going to be another widget here, another widget here, and then a bunch of, you know, four widgets or five widgets here. And once I knew that, uh, it made it a lot easier. It made it a lot simpler to keep going because from my experience, you can't really have this tool build out the whole app in one flow, right? It's going to stop and you have to tell it to like keep going, but it can also crash, you can have errors, and so it's not a good idea to, you know, use it for very, very complex apps. But for very, very simple apps, it does a really good job. And so I was amazed that it's able to kind of generate this code. It can explain the code. It can, you know, you know tell you what, what the problem is with the code. And it's great that it can generate this code in all kinds of different programming languages. That is really, really cool. 
And so some final thoughts about this tool, okay, when I started to using it. Obviously, everybody's talking about this tool. It's an amazing tool and you can use it for all kinds of things, right? Not just programming, you know, not just, you know, building Flutter apps or, you know, Flutter flow, but you can use it in all kinds of different areas. And so I spent like a week just, you know, testing it for different things, you know, geography, geopolitics, lots of interesting things. And it was able to come up with some interesting um, answers to questions that would probably take me a while to Google, right? So it, it can give me an answer. And I'm like, okay, and I can ask it like a follow up question and all that. And that, that's really, really cool. Now, in terms of the programming kind of the technical aspects that um, it's able to generate code and do all that, I see it uh, more of a, another tool in your arsenal. So there are sites like Stack Overflow that help developers with very, very specific problems. And I actually had to go to Stack Overflow to help me solve a bunch of issues after it generated this code. And judging by some of the posts that you're going to see on Stack Overflow, a lot of other people are having the same thing. They generate this code, they go to Stack Overflow, and then they ask real humans, like, why is this AI generating the code that doesn't work? And nobody's going to answer them, right? These, these kind of responses, people are just close them because it's not, it's, not, it's not you that's asking them, right? So you're going to see that all the time. And um, I actually had to, you know, Google a couple of issues that I was having. And, and so I don't see this tool as kind of like this tool that's going to go out and build all my apps and do all, the, all these amazing things. I see it as another tool in my arsenal. I see it alongside uh, to Stack Overflow, to documentation, to all these things, because at the end of the day, you need some, uh, you need some creativity. You need some, you know, imagination to create the app that you want. But this tool can be useful if you need to kind of nail down some of the details. And actually, an interesting comment that I saw on one of the other uh, YouTube channel, a programmer uh, technical YouTube channel, uh, is this one right here. Chat GTP will replace programmers just like scientific calculators replaced maths professors. And that's a, this is an interesting analogy, but still we have to realize that who knows what's going to happen in you know a year, two years, three years. This whole field of AI is advancing rapidly. Just amazing things are happening. And this tool is definitely going to come into play in different industries, different areas. And I'm definitely going to be using it from time to time if I have certain issues, certain problems that I need a solution on. So it's, it's advancing rapidly. But right now, uh, you still need to think for yourself. You still need to kind of think what kind of apps you want to create. And then you can use other tools to kind of help you uh, get there. And that is kind of the way I see it. Now, if you like this tool and you like no code and you want to take your no code level up a couple of notches, then one of the best things that you can do for yourself is joining my Patreon community. Not only will you be able to get access to all the apps that I build, that I experiment on this channel, whether it's a Flutterflow app, Flutter app, or pretty much any other apps that I've done on this channel, different no code builders, stuff like that, but you also get access to lots of extra content such as live streams, Q and A's, my new masterclass series behind the scenes. I'm also thinking about starting a brand new series, something along the lines of week in review where I'm gonna be sharing with you some thoughts that went behind making these videos, uh, a lot of informal ideas and formal talking. I think next episode is gonna be uh, where I'm gonna be talking about chat GTP. So a lot of fun, a lot of interesting things. And, and so if you love this channel, you're getting tons of value by watching these videos, maybe I helped you in a specific problem, maybe I just gave you a new idea. By joining my Patreon, you're gonna have access to a ton more content. Plus by joining Patreon, you're also gonna be supporting this channel and supporting my work. So if you haven't yet joined, I would definitely encourage you to do so. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing no-code content. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll talk to you real, real soon.